man is back. Oh, my God, die, 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 boys. Oh my gosh, the man got messed up! This is a 5 out of freaking 5. It is beat making time. Next week is E3, we might have them come comes out next week. I have to limp it. Talk to you, talk to you, talk to you. Oh, look at that, my God! This is your boy. All right, ladies and gentlemen of YouTube citizens, y'all know who this is. This is your boy, Dash the True Inferno. <laughs> Back at it with another Kingdom Hearts 3 gameplay for you guys. And we talking NBA basketball. Yes, that's what we're doing. We are talking NBA basketball because there's a lot going on in the NBA. Obviously, we got the playoffs going on right now. And... The draft lottery happened last night, so we know who got the number one pick and the number two pick, which is pretty darn hilarious, if I do say so myself. This, that, that was just hilarious. That was the craziest thing I had ever seen involving a draft lottery. So, for those of you who don't know, basically, out of college is Zion Williamson, who is projected to be one of the greatest NBA basketball players ever. Like, this dude is big time in college. Unfortunately... For him, him and Duke did not win the national championship. They got close, but ultimately they did not win. They lost to Michigan State in the Elite Eight, if remember says it correctly. Yeah, it was the Elite Eight. It was the Elite Eight. So, but despite that, Zion Wilson is projected to be the number one pick going into the NBA draft, which is June the 20th, 24th, 24, something like that. I forgot when. But anywho. The number one pick went to the New Orleans Pelicans. The number two pick went to the Memphis Grizzlies. The number three pick went to the New York Knicks. And the number four pick went to the Los Angeles Lakers. So those two teams missed out on getting the number one and the number two pick. And it's hilarious. Because those two are big time markets. New York been struggling for years. And the Lakers been struggling. Well... Yes, to some degree, basketball wise, obviously they didn't make the playoffs, but they do have LeBron. But the problem is, there's so much issue. There's a lot of issues within the organization, from Magic Johnson stepping down without telling anybody, to them messing around with the whole hiring the head coach. Uh, they got with uh, what's his name? I forgot the guy who was there last year, but he's in trouble too, by the way. But oh guys, that's a whole nother issue right there, and. They was messing around with Ty Lu in terms of him trying to be the head coach. And they brought in Frank Vogel with Jason Kidd as the leading assistant coach. But basically, they said, oh, they're going to kick Vogel to the curb in about three years or so. And it's going to be Jason Kidd's team eventually. It, it's, it's a mess out in the Lakers organization. And then they got to deal with the Clippers who are on the rise. So it's all crazy right now. But. Yeah, I'm going to talk about that for a few minutes. But really, I want to talk about the Boston Celtics scenario. That's another story franchise right there that been having turmoil all year long. Because on paper, if you were to look at this team from last year, what they accomplished, and then you look at that team this year on paper, you would think, yo, this team have a shot of winning the championship. This team have a shot of beating the Golden State Warriors, which is consisted of KD, Steph, and Clay, and Draymond. And they brought in Anthony Davis. I'm not Anthony Davis, my bad. DeMarcus Cousins. So you're thinking, yo, this team have a shot to knock off Golden State, you know, and win the championship on paper. Because they had Kyrie, they have Gordon Hayward coming back from injury, and they have all these young guys who were balling last year in the playoffs without Kyrie, without Gordon Hayward. If memory serves correctly, they made it to the Eastern Conference Finals, and they got put out by LeBron. That's the only thing. They got put out by LeBron. Outside of that, this team was balling, and they got a bunch of young talent. And on paper, this team should be contending for a championship. But what happened is when the season started and over the next few weeks after that, they got that slow start, and then they picked it up, and then they it was an up-and-down season for them. And they looked really good in the first round, even though they faced off against Indiana. I believe that swept them. But Indiana did not have Victor Oladipo. So it was like, really, would you even consider that to be a challenge? But... The second round match, they faced Milwaukee, who got the best record in all the NBA. They got the Greek freak. And the game one, which was in Milwaukee, Boston came in and stomped their asses out. And, I, and everybody was like, yo, this Boston Celtics squad looks to be firing on all cylinders. And then what happened? They lost the next four. 
to Milwaukee. So they lost on the road to Milwaukee. They lost the next two games at home in Boston. Then they went back to Milwaukee for game five, and they lost that one. Boom, they out of the playoffs. So why am I talking about this? Well, one of those young guys on that Boston Celtics squad, Teddy Rozier, was on ESPN's first take yesterday. And if you haven't seen that, you need to look it up on YouTube because that was very interesting. He basically said that, yeah, everything was not peach and cream, you know, peach and clean right in Boston. Unlike uh, what another guy said, trying to stand up for Kyrie. But he basically saying that it was an issue of Kyrie trying to be a leader and being so ball dominant. And the issue of the coach and the GM basically won his, what's his name, Gordon Hayward to start. Because remember last year, Golden Hayward was injured all year long. So that means somebody else started at that small forward, power forward position, whatever the case may be. This year, they brought him back, in my opinion, they brought Golden Hayward back way too early and they started him immediately. So all them young players who were balling together, they had a good chemistry together and obviously some of them were starting last year. That wasn't the case this year. And that messed up their chemistry. And I knew, I was like... Yeah, their, their chemistry messed up. I, I, I don't think they're going to do anything in the playoffs. And they didn't do anything in the playoffs, so I was correct there. But he was basically saying, yeah, there were some issues in Boston. And it's a mixture of them, as in the coach and the GM, basically, playing Golden Hayward and trying to put force him back into the lineup after coming back from that horrendous injury. I'm glad I didn't see that in per like, I didn't see that game. So I didn't see how bad the injury was. I'm glad I didn't see that. But they brought him back way too soon and he didn't even look good he didn't even look good so they tried to bring him off the bench and it took him a while to get close to all-star level because he is an all-star golden hay was an all-star but again they, they they messed up that situation wrong so it was that issue right there combined with Kyrie being so ball dominant trying to take the team you know on his shoulders and trying to be a leader, which is, he's not a leader. Kyrie Irving is not a leader. Kyrie Irving is in many things now. Like, sick handles, highly talented, one of the best scoring point guards in the league, an all-star, a superstar. Like, Kyrie Irving is big time. He's he's a lot of these positive things, but he is not a leader. Like, he could be the secret weapon, he could be your closer, but he is not a leader. And that's not a bad thing. You know, not everybody can lead. I'm going to call myself the best leader on the world or anything like that. I'm not I'm not saying I'm, a, you know, a, a great leader or anything like that. Depending on the situation of what we're dealing with, things like that, then I can take control and be like, yeah, you need to do this, you need to do that, whatever. But I can't do that every single time. So I'm going to say I'm a, you know, natural-born leader. So, you know, that's not a bad thing. So Kyrie is not a natural-born leader. So those two combinations... You know, Terry basically came out and said, yeah, that was screwed over the Boston Celtics last year. And when asked if he would do it again next year, he said no. He, he trying to dip. So that is very interesting. You know, I just want to put that out there. Now, before I wrapped up this video, I want to talk about the playoffs right now. So we got the final four. And this was not the final four I expected. Like, I got three of the teams correct. But... One of those teams really shocked me. So I got Golden State in the Western Conference Finals, which is correct. I got Toronto against Milwaukee in the Eastern Conference Finals, which is correct. But Portland, Portland made it to the Western Conference Finals. I did not see that coming. The team that I actually picked to go is the team that they beat in the first round. That's the Oklahoma City Thunder. That's the team that I picked to go to the Western Conference Finals. Obviously, that didn't happen. Dame just stick it to Oklahoma City and made their way towards the Western Conference Finals. So how do I see this play out, with, especially with KD out? We, we don't know when he going to come back. I'm not sure they should bring him back for the rest of the conference finals because I truly believe without KD, the Golden State Warriors can beat the Portland Trailblazers. It may take six games. It may take seven games. But I truly believe that the Golden State Warriors can beat the Portland Trailblazers and advance to the rest of the, uh, to the NBA finals. rather. Now, what happens there? They need KD. They need KD. I don't care who they face, whether it's Milwaukee, whether it's Toronto, because there's no way that they have anybody that can stop the Greek Freak or Kawhi Leonard. So they need Kevin Durant in the NBA Finals. But who will they meet in the NBA Finals? I said this in my one of my Pokemon Go videos. I posted up, you know, I guess images of who I got winning each round and things of that nature, blah, blah, blah. 
I said Toronto was going to the NBA Finals. I'm sticking with that prediction. I like Toronto to go to the NBA Finals. Game one of the Eastern Conference Finals starts tonight, by the way. But I got Toronto going to the NBA Finals. So I see Golden State against Toronto. If KD is not back, you know, at all, then Toronto winning it all. But if KD shows up and he is healthy, then Golden I got, you know, this is my regular season pick. This is my playoff pick. I got Golden State winning it all again this year. So I'm going to wrap it up from there. So with that said, y'all know who this is. This is your boy, the new Jake Aspie, a.k.a. the new Stephen A. Smith, saying peace out, y'all, and I'll see y'all next time. Yeah.